Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. And this is Chefs versus the Internet. And today it's chocolate chip cookies. Representing the chefs in the blue corner is Sorted's very own Benjamin the Cookie Monster Ebrel. And representing TikTok is Michael Brian Huttlestone. How come you get a middle name? David's boring, isn't it? <laughs> They're both gonna bake recipes they've collated from their respective areas. And then it's down to Jamie to blind taste test to see which technique comes out the best. Let's start baking in three, two, one. Cookie. Right, overwhelming tip, straight off the bat, brown your butter. Now do. Into a pan, whack the heat up, and for goodness sake, keep an eye on it. The food team and I, also agree brown butter is important, so we're starting in the same place as TikTok. Butter into a pan. I've gone for a nice deep one because we want it to foam up over a high heat. I'm gonna whisk it pretty much constantly until we get a wonderful, nutty, aromatic butter. Interesting. There was more detail from Ben. Yeah, it's essentially <laughs> the same thing. thing though, more yeah. hyperbole, yes. <laughs> Two different pans. Interesting. So, this is gonna bubble. It's going to foam and then you're going to get little dots of brown start to appear. And that's when it needs to come off the heat and the residual is going to turn it properly brown without burning. And a dark bottom pan is not helping. Now you know why I use the silver one. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice lots of water evaporating. That's important. We'll come back to that. Right, so it's beginning to change now very slightly and that's now we want to continue whisking. As soon as you're happy with the colour, which I am, pour it into something to stop it cooking further. Lightly browned. There's a bit more smoke coming from Ben's pan. Interesting. I'm also now going to chill it down by putting it into an ice bath, and I'm adding one ice cube in. He's give, giving his butter a bath, Mike. Basically, take it to the level you want, and then rather than residual, you kind of want to chill it down so you've got control of it, plus the water that evaporated off, is now going back in in the form of about 30 grams, a couple of tablespoons of water, about an ice cube. Let's talk dry ingredients. I've got 220 grams of plain flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, and this next bit is key, sugar. You guys on TikTok recommended a 75% brown sugar to white sugar ratio in order to get a real caramelly toffee flavor. And my goodness, does this make a difference? and absolutely key, a teaspoon and a half of salt. Mix all of that together. We want it all to be the same consistency, well mixed in, before we add our wet ingredients. For someone who doesn't bake, you seem very confident, Mike. Have you made this before? He's got the whole of TikTok behind him. I've really got into this. I tested two batches last night. No way. Because I really want to take the win. And the main reason being, I tried to make cookie dough and pass it on live, and messed oh, it up yeah. so badly, it was humiliating. I watched it back and I couldn't finish the rest of the episode. So I've really got some retribution to, to aim for today. Mike's starting with dry. I'm starting with the eggs and the sugar, which I'm going to whip up into a really airy mixture until I get ribbon stage. It sounds like we're getting two very different types of cookie doughs. Or we can get two very different types of cooking. A lot of it is precision ratio. Mike's going 75% brown sugar, I'm going 50-50. My dry ingredients, also the same, plain flour, baking powder, and salt. Smell that. Smell my butt, oh, it's hot. <laughs> it is nutty. And that's the comparison of mine. They're two different things, that, that's just melted butter. <laughs> so it's mine. <laughs> that's just melted butter. It's burn noise it. I'll stop saying things. Obviously yours is liquid. Mm. This I've cooled down in a water bath because that enables you to mix it into a cookie dough without changing the temperature. So adding hot butter into a mix, you run risks of it not all combining, whereas this now is a consistency of bernoisette that can go into our dough. So that is just butter. Wow. You've got that nuttiness. That is, yeah. Oh, your hob's off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put a metal bowl on a hob because you just melt your Ebers. perfectly... Rule 101 of the kitchen. That was on. <laughs> okay, let's talk chocolate. Michael, that's a surprise. This is really just pretty decent cooking chocolate from a supermarket. And the reason I've gone for all three is because I do want to get, again, a balance of different flavours 
So we've gone for single origin Colombian dark cocoa chips. Baking is often an expression of our love for others. By choosing quality chocolate, you're treating others better too. Oh, there we go. So, marketing. 70% chocolate, but I have actually <laughs> gone for chips because <laughs> the job's already done for you. And this is chocolate chip cookies, not chocolate chunk cookies. Ooh. Oh, shut up. Throwing chocolate shade. Let's go wet into dry. My butter's going in. Stir the butter through first. I'm going in with one large egg, a teaspoon and a half of vanilla paste. While Mike is moving that all around in a bowl, I'm adding to my really airy egg and white sugar, the brown sugar, the bernoisette, and the vanilla. So all of the rest of the wet ingredients, the brown sugar and the white sugar combo gives you the difference between a crunchy and a chewy cookie. Chocolate going in. In terms of dose of chocolate ratio, it looks like you're on 50-50 then. Mate. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I'm also going relatively generous with my chocolate you chips. You are pulling it. Ebers. Eb Ebers. What the hell? That's ridiculous. Well, that is a complete lack of control, isn't it? Big balls. So I'm now rolling my dough into 100 gram balls, where I'm going to chill it for half an hour. You wanted to see my dough? Yeah, show me your dough. Whoa! Do you also got a lot, more, lot more brown sugar. Even though I've got less brown sugar, mine's 50-50, you should have that cross between chew and crisp. Big difference here, let the flour hydrate. So at this stage, I'm going to put my mix into the fridge and leave it overnight. Just let the flour kind of hydrate before you start to knead it properly. That's what I'm going to do. Naughty, naughty Evans. Whereas Mike made his last night in practice, Ben also made his last night and didn't cook it. Along those same lines, big tip from you guys on TikTok was it has to chill down for maximum 24 hours. Really interested to see how that turns out. Minimum half an hour. So I'm not going to leave my dough overnight for 24 hours because when you make cookies, it's such a quick, achievable thing. You want to be eating the cookies the same day that you've made them, don't you? I would 100% agree with that, and I think in the 12 years of Sorted, we've always done cookie recipes that are mix and bake. I agree, that's kind of the point. However, when you go out to like a cafe or a shop that does cookies and does them really well, it's this kind of tip that makes them that little bit better. Is it worth the extra 24 hours? We'll find out. Given how precisely I've weighed out every single ingredient that goes into my cookies, I'm actually now not weighing them out. I'm just rolling them to golf ball sizes. Hello. The other advantage of this method is the make-ahead beauty of it. You can actually roll them up into that shape and then chill them so you're just whacking out individual cookie balls and baking them off, or you can actually freeze them. But do that after it's had the hydration time. Mm. Also, the thing about chilling them is you've got a colder outside, so when they go into the oven, you get the crispy outside and the gooey middle. Right, top tip for my balls. No one wants to hear that. Whilst they start off perfect, rip them in half, what? turn them on the side and put them back together. What are you talking about? Is this to get the crack? You're not a crack when it bakes as such. It just gives you a bit more texture on the inside. Sorry, I don't understand. Well, you don't always want the perfect cookie, do you? You kind of want them to look a bit homemade, a bit rustic, a bit like they haven't come off a factory line, but instead you've slaved over them for 24 hours. Yeah, in but the, the purpose of this video is to find the recipe for the perfect cookie. <laughs> ah, but I'm redefining perfect as something you love rather than something that is He's uniform. He's redefining oh, a mom. word from the English language. How does that sound? Listen to that. He's on an ego trip. He's out of control. While Mike's dough is chilling, mine have already been chilling overnight, so now they're just shaped and ready to go. Leave plenty of space around them on the tray to expand, and then into an oven 160 degrees for 13 or 14 minutes. Ooh. Until they're crispy around the outside, but still very soft in the middle, they will set up as they cool. Lower than I expected. I thought everything baked at 180. Except for the perfect cookie. Now I'm going to put them into the oven at 175 for about 11 to 12 minutes, keeping an eye on them throughout. Jamie, welcome. Thank you for having me. Are you ready for this? Please come into work today and eat chocolate chip cookies and tell me which one you think is best. I'm ready. I'm going to start over here. Here. So that is cookie A. 
Crispy on the outside, soft in the middle. Oh, he's taking this seriously. Mm. It doesn't go up the nose. Mm. Now, what I like about this cookie, it's crispy on the outside, and it's softer and chewier in the middle. I feel like there could be a fair amount of brown sugar in this one because it's got that chew to it. I feel like I'm picking up on another flavour outside of chocolate flavour and cookie flavour. You're squeezing that cookie a little bit more than you <laughs> can do. <laughs> You're caressing that cookie. It's slightly cakey in the middle. That is a good cookie. That is a really good cookie. Can I move on to B? Yes. Bloody hell! This is a heavy cookie. Oh. Oh, naughty, naughty. Okay. What a job. Wow. Did you see that? Because I didn't, but I felt it. <laughs> it's falling apart. That. Okay. This is a very different cookie from A. It is thicker, but because of the thickness, there is an even bigger difference in the textures. It's still crispy on the outside, but the middle is much more gooey. Whereas I thought A had quite a bit of brown sugar in it because it does give you that chewier texture, B has gone all in on the brown sugar. That's how I feel. I'm getting salt, which lifts it, cuts through the richness of the chocolate. Well, I think this is quite a complex cookie. I've got sweetness, richness, and saltiness in B. The, the bitterness in A is coming out a bit more. Oh no, this is hard. You're gonna have to pick a winner, Jay. I have a winner. Based on personal preference of what I want from a cookie, my winner is B. Sweet, salty treat. Remove the blindfold. I can reveal that you have chosen to back TikTok and Michael Hallstone. That is an impressive cookie. I mean, I mean let's get in, let, oh, yeah, let's yeah. take these and let's get stuck in because oh. I think that we should all get well into here. We've talked about the caveman taste buds before, haven't we? And I feel like TikTok Mike's one, that is that sweet, salty wonderfulness, ticks every box. You're right though, they are two completely different cookies. Oh, yeah. This is cakey and it's it's delicious. If, if you prefer a cakey cookie, this is awesome. Ben's are better with a, with a strong coffee. The other is, oh, it's just a hot, <laughs> naughty treat, yeah. Thanks. TikTok takes the win today, but who is your winner? Comment down below. Also, what tips and tricks you'll be taking from the cookies and applying to your ones at home? Or create the ultimate master cookie by taking the best tips of both. We're gonna put both recipes in the link down below so you can do one, other, or a hybrid of the two. And thank you very much, TikTok. You made this happen. I'm glad I represented you well. Ebba's loses again. The thought of having to cook after a long day can be... <laughs> Our Meal Packs app can change this. First, pick a meal pack. Meal packs contain three or more recipes that make you go, Whoa, I want to eat that. These will be your meals for the week. It then generates one shopping list. And this is the clever bit. It stretches that list of ingredients across all those meals, using up all the fresh food you buy. Once you've bought your ingredients, we take you step by step through the cooking with written and audio guides. Fry for seven to eight minutes. Throw in automatic timers, smartly placed cues to wash up as you go, and twists from other users so you can adapt recipes to suit your tastes. And you can join the thousands of people changing this into this. Use our 30 day free trial to complete just one meal pack and you'll see the difference for yourself. That's the way the cookie comes. <laughs> yes. um, how yeah. long were you thinking up how you were going to get that into On the, the train this morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah.